don't know if you want to let me know. It looks like there's still probably quite a few people that are trying to log on this morning. So I'll probably give it another minute or two and then we'll go ahead and uh, get things started. For those of you that are on the call, if you don't mind um, logging off of your video and then just putting yourselves on mute just so that we can uh, be mindful of the bandwidth of everyone that's on the call. Um, and then I'll just go over a few housekeeping things uh, momentarily. Julianne, we still have some people trickling through. Thanks, Paige. Paige, can you tell me if uh, Rhonda has called in? She has not yet. Be, okay, it might be hard to tell and I will. There's a few minutes before she's going to be on, so I will double check with her. We have quite a quite a group this morning, so that's very exciting. I hope everybody's much cooler than I am because it's very hot in this office this morning. Rich, you look uh, really casual and relaxed. So, I, I had a uh, a WebEx call just last week, and that I needed to kind of dress for. It was the first time I think I buttoned the shirt in <laughs> what four months. I know, I know. It, it, it felt weird. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to thank everyone for tuning into our info session about the commercialization competition. Um, I'm still seeing quite a few people kind of joining us here. So I think we, we had over uh, 60 people registered. So I just want to make sure everybody has ample time to uh, log on and hear the housekeeping items. So thank you for your patience. I think we'll wait for a couple more and then I'll go ahead and get get started. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's a couple minutes after 9.30. Uh, if, for those who, who join in, they can certainly um, pick up wherever we are. For those of you that are on the call, uh, if you don't mind, if you could just mute yourself and log off of the video portion. Um, and then if you have any questions, um, we have some different points throughout the info session where you're able to ask a Q and A, and then we'll certainly do some Q and A at the end as well. So um, if you could just log off the video, that would be very helpful for bandwidth uh, for those people who might have some technical issues. So this morning, um, I want to welcome all of our uh, speakers and panelists. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. I know a lot of people have been asking about the commercialization competition and you know, if we were going to do it. So uh, thank you to, to everyone who's on the call. Uh, from Fuse Hub, it's myself. I'm Julianne Clothier. I'm the Director of Industry Engagement, and I oversee the Innovation Fund. Uh, joining me from the Innovation Fund team is Patty Retschberger, our program coordinator. And we also have Paige Franzak on who's helping with some logistics behind the screen and uh, also helping with the chat feature if we, we get overwhelmed with uh, Q&A. So thank you to them. Uh, joining us from outside of Fuse Hub, we have our legal counsel, Rich Honan, who is the partner and team leader venture capital team for Philips Lytle. So thank you, Rich. And we have a couple of our previous awardees from our commercialization competition. Uh, we wanted to really make it interactive this time. So I felt that for companies who were listening into the info session, that it would be great to hear the perspectives of our awardees and, you know, in terms of the safe, the investment tool, and then just the overall uh, networking and benefits of being a part of the commercialization competition. So from 2019, we have Rhonda Stout from Combined Energies, and from 2018, we have Juan Guzman from CaproX. So you'll hear a little bit about their prototypes and why they decided to um, entertain the idea of applying to the commercialization competition um, with the investment tool and then we'll hear a little bit more from them. So I wanted to go over the agenda just so that everybody has an idea of what the flow of the info session is going to be so that 
you know, if you hear some a different part and you want to log off or have to come back, you kind of have an idea. So um, I'm going to go over the safe and Rich is going to join in and talk about valuation and terms and, and why we are doing the safe. Um, I've invited Juan and Rhonda to kind of speak to that themselves from their different perspectives. Uh, and then I'll open it up to Q&A uh, specifically to the safe and those particular items because it really is the crux of applying to the competition. If you're not interested in that part, then you may not be interested in applying and what the process and parameters are from that point. Uh, then we will talk about eligibility and kind of some of the history of the commercialization competition and then you're welcome to ask questions about eligibility and we'll wrap everything up and Patty will go into some great details about applying to the commercialization competition, all the aspects of the uh, SurveyMonkey Apply platform, and then some best practices and some things pertaining to the uploads. Um, each year we have a couple of uh, variations to the program, so it's always nice to hear you know, what we're going to be doing and some of the struggles that previous applicants have had and uh, things that you can avoid. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Rich. And uh, Rich, if you just want to start off and let people know why we are doing the SAFE and you know some of the things that you've seen over the last couple of years. Sure. First, can you hear me OK? Yes. OK. Um, uh, thanks. Good morning. Thanks to everybody for sitting in. Uh, so the first question is always, um, you know, why did you? Why is there an investment vehicle at all? Why can't we just have the money? Why can't it be a grant? You know, a gift. Uh, lots of you uh, are, are dealing with companies that are that are supporting themselves with grants. Uh, the short answer is sustainability. Um, we want the program to continue. Uh, if the um, if thing if you win money and things don't work out that's fine, you know, you've gotten some experience and we've advanced the technology ball a little bit. But if you are talented enough and fortunate enough to have some kind of exit at some point, yeah, FuseHub would like to recoup uh, its investment or a part of it and uh, be able to then put that money into the next company or companies. You know, it's, it's a not-for-profit um, and that money will just go back into other companies. So the short answer is sustainability. Second question is why a safe as opposed to other investment vehicles? And we've tried a couple uh, over the years. Uh, I think when we first started, we had warrants, and I think one of the companies is gonna speak to that, um, which I actually thought was a pretty, I thought it was a pretty company friendly way to go. At the end of the day, Fuse Hub would end up with some common stock or common units in the company. Um, but we learned over the last couple of years uh, that safes and convertible notes especially in the upstate New York area, but really throughout the country, certainly uh, on the West Coast, have become uh, by far the investment vehicle of choice for startup companies. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, one of them is, is this, that when you have a startup company, it's really hard to figure out what the valuation is. It's usually a pretty binary prospect. If the stuff works, <clears throat> excuse me, if the stuff works, then the valuation will be quite high. If the stuff doesn't work, then it'll be low. And you don't really know that at the time that you're making your early stage investments. So a safe or a convertible note both have the same idea. Uh, the investor puts money in. The money kind of sits there. Uh, the investor doesn't have any ownership yet uh, or any rights in the company. And then when the company raises big money, uh, and our our definition of big money is half a million dollars uh, or more. If the, if once the company raises big money from uh, you know, professional investors that get preferred stock, then the safe or the convertible note amount is then just rolled into that investment. Julianne, you still good? Just, okay. Um, I just need to know if I'm going too fast or too slow. Uh, the, uh, um, so, and that's how, to, how a safe or uh, a convertible note work. The difference between a safe and a convertible note is a convertible note is the investor will lend the money. And if you never get any other money, technically you're supposed to pay that money back. It's a little bit of a fiction because if you don't have any money, how are you gonna pay it back? Uh, the safe, uh, relatively new over the last three or four years, originated on the West Coast. All of my Silicon Valley deals uh, use safes. Um, and it just dispensed with the fiction that you're ever gonna repay the money. It just said, if we ever get new money, then this will roll into it. Uh, and uh, if not, that's the way it goes. 
So that's why uh, we moved to a safe. Most of our companies that have already gotten some investment besides grants, uh, obviously a lot of you are, are working on getting grants. Most of you have gotten investment, if at all, through a safe or a convertible note. So you'll have the same type of vehicle. And, and that's why we picked it. Um, the other questions uh, that, you know, why this form of safe? Um, the, uh, there's probably more forms out there than we'd like to see. Uh, we, you know, we in, in the business would love to see a little more standardization. Standard, I'm not gonna say, it, have it be more standard. Um, the, uh, the form we use uh, is based on the Y Combinator safe, which is a pretty uh, well used um, uh, safe. Um, we made some tweaks to it. We're going to continue making tweaks to it. it it's supposed to be fairly company friendly. Um, it, it has most of the features that you'll see with, with, from most investors. Um, and you know, I, if there's questions, I can answer that. The one other thing I want to say about the safe before I don't want to go over my time is the other thing that Fuse Hub is very, very strong on is once you have actually, you know, once you've won and you enter into the safe, a lot of times you might have uh, other investments going on. Uh, you might have new investments. We are very flexible in making sure that the safe works with your current investments and works with your next round of investments. We do, you know, I've been doing venture capital and startup deals for, you know, 35 years. Um, we've done lots of them uh, on, on all sides of, of the table. Uh, so we know what they're looking for. Fuse Hub has always been very flexible. If, if you need help on the valuation cap, if you have safes that have most favored nation clauses, uh, if you have other things, uh, we work very well with the companies. I, I, I think that that's been one of the strengths. So that's the explanation. So um, Rich, I'm, this is a, a good point to jump in. Patty or Paige, if anybody wants to post in the chat the, the, the current version that we have of the safe, um, you're, you're free to take a look at that. And one of the other things I should point out that you know we've seen historically uh, in the fund is when people, you know, we're giving you ample time to look up, look at this, think about this before you apply, so that once you you go through the competition and if you're awarded, you had that time to kind of think, do I want to do this? Because sometimes when when it gets to the point and people are awarded, then it takes forever for them to decide that they even want to do the safe. So one of the reasons that we wanted to do the info session and provide upfront information is so when we get to that point, people have an understanding that this is how we're going to move forward. It is a part of the grant agreement process and it doesn't really hold up the, 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 the timeline because we, we do run into that. So we're really trying to be proactive with the companies to make them understand what this is we're here to answer questions well in advance i mean it's it's july right now the competition isn't until november so you know the thinking is by november um if you're awarded on the 19th um or selected that you know we can move forward in, in a timely manner so that's that's one of the things that we have so i don't see any questions as of yet so i'm gonna go back rich and kind of touch on a couple of things so one of the questions, and you may have had covered this, is uh, somebody had asked about, can we do a no cap, no discount safe in place of the template safe that we have? Yeah, and uh, the answer is generally no. Uh, the, uh, so right now there's a valuation cap on the safe, meaning that once you, if you get your new funding, um, yes, we will roll into that new funding, but if you get a new funding and your valuation is $2 billion um, and, and you know, somewhat unrealistic, then we're gonna make sure that, that we roll in at a price set by the cap, very standard. We've had some, we will have some conversations if you have investors that have a higher cap, for example, and they don't, they don't wanna get hurt by that, that's fine. Um, as far as the discount, we also get in, as with most safes, we get in at a price that's 15% better than, than your investors. So if we would have gotten 10,000 shares, we will get 11,500 shares of your you know, 20 million. Um, we will negotiate, we will try and make the safe consistent with whatever else you have. We understand a lot of early stage companies, sometimes their first couple of rounds of funding weren't on the greatest terms. Uh, and so th those first rounds can become burdensome when a more standard, you know, kind of market type um, investment like ours comes in. We understand it, we'll work with it. We're, we're not, but we're not gonna get rid of all of the, uh, you know, all, all of the characteristics uh, and all of the investment terms. 
you should read it. If you don't like it, um, that's fine. I'm happy to answer questions on it. But if it's something that's not going to work for you, that's a decision to be made really before you enter the competition. So I think this kind of rolls into the next question. Um, one of the attendees asked, are the terms on the safe fixed? Meaning, is there some negotiation? Uh, if, if the, the, ter the terms are pretty fixed, yeah, there is some negotiation because, uh, and usually to make it consistent with other safes. Uh, we're not, we're not going to change it a lot. First of all, that wouldn't be fair to, to other people uh, who have the same safe. But sometimes uh, we will have a term that's not terribly meaningful to us, but because of your capital structure could be burdensome to you. And yeah, we'll have that conversation. The time when I want to have that conversation, I will say, is before. Um, you know, if, 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 you know, don't have that conversation as we're, you know, reading off the list of, you know, the two or three winners, uh, because then we're, we'll have a lot less flexibility then. But yeah, happy to have the conversation, happy to be flexible. Yeah, I, I think you've, you've answered his question. And then one of the other things is um, the impact on pre previous investor notes. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about before. A lot of uh, early stage investors will have what we call most favored nation clauses. Uh, so it might say if, if um, you know, we have really good terms, but if anybody comes up with any other terms, we get those as well. And that could become burdensome. We're happy to, um, uh, I don't think this, this safe is very market. Uh, so it should not really affect any of your, your previous uh, notes or safes. If it does, it probably means that, you know, you had to go out and get some non-market vehicle in the first place, you know, which happens. Um, but we will, uh, we'll look at that. And if you come to us and say, wow, for, for whatever reason, we're in a unique situation. This really hurts us. Happy to have that conversation. And I've also talked to the previous investors as well to see if there's a way of, of making some consistency out of that capital structure. Great. Uh, thanks, Rich. So I think this is probably a good point. I'm going to go on and see uh, Rhonda. I think you are. Um, on the call. So if you wouldn't mind, if you could just talk about what your prototype was and, and um, just kind of your reaction to the safe and, you know, why you guys decided to pursue the competition um, despite the investment vehicle. So she, she might be muted, but Rhonda, can you hear us? Okay, well, well, we'll move over to Juan and we'll see if we can get Rhonda on the call. Juan, are you, are you with us? Oh. Yes, I'm. Oh, Ooh. she might have a, you might have a bad connection. I... Are you there? Yep. Okay, great. Go ahead, Rhonda. Okay, so about our prototype. So Combined Energies is building a DC to DC converter for use with um, renewable energy, energy storage, and fuel cells. And um, we decided to go through the competition because we had a prototype um, built and we were happy with its performance, but that we needed to mature the technology to the point of being able to produce it um, with production vendors um, and get it really get it out of the lab and into the hands of people who do manufacturing as their um, as their business as opposed to people who do development in the lab. And um, the we had to, you know, pick a project that would fit within the amount of funding that was going to be awarded. Um, and so, you know, we didn't pick the whole converter. We picked a piece that needed to get um, into production um, so that we could understand its cost. We could understand things that were wrong with it. Um, um, from a supply or from a uh, production standpoint and um, so we, that's what we proposed as our project and then of course they you you do have time to allude to what would you do if you uh, uh, win the big, big prize and so we had a little bit larger project that we would have done if we had won the whole thing but we were one of the fifty thousand dollar winners um, combined energies had an open um, convertible note round um, at the time of being awarded um, last year in November. And so we looked at the safe, we, we knew the safe was the standard agreement, but for us, um, we had our attorney, our advisor um, review the safe versus our current convertible note. And it was, 
you know, I won't say it was easier, but to sign to have Fuse Hub sign on to our current round meant we didn't have to do a lot of work with our current investors um, in terms of because they just became another signer onto the convertible note round. So um, that's what we did. Rich reviewed our convertible note, and um, that, that's what what we went forward with. And it was really easy, and the terms were very similar. Um, we had a valuation cap. We had um, a minimum. I think we have a min investment for conversion, and we have an end date um, for the notes too. So that's how it went. Great, thanks, Rhonda. Um, I appreciate that, and it's just you know another piece of evidence to show that we really don't want to be an impedance to your your growth and progress. But at the same time, we have to be fair to all the applicants, and you know we are certainly open to discussions um, along the way. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Juan. And uh, Juan, if you just want to touch on the same points. Uh, hi, how's my COVID hair doing? It's okay. Good. <laughs> I have a slide I can just share. Uh, I don't know if I have the rights to do that. You should now, one. Yep. Okay. So, Caprex was founded in. Nope. Are you seeing the full screen or the? We'll just deal with this. So, Caprex was founded in 2018. Um, as a result of work from my PhD at Cornell, and we won Fuse Hub in, in the end of 2018. So we're still at a pretty prototype level where um, basically we're running reactors in the lab and at like a one gallon scale. And for our business, where we're basically trying to treat dairy wastes from Greek yogurt production in New York, we knew we really had to scale up 100, 1,000 times to be able to really be taken seriously as a, as a solution for the market. So what we want to pitch to Fuse Hub was to basically scale our system from one gallon up to basic uh, around 150 gallons. And we're able to basically put together a budget to buy a shipping container, all the equipment that we need to run a wastewater treatment system that takes acid wave from Greek yogurt, treats, treats that waste to make recycled water, and these green palm oil substitutes on site at a yogurt plant in, a, in, in New York. So we were able to fund that all through mainly all the capital. I'm, I don't believe we put any salaries on there, but mainly capital to prove the technology out at a larger scale. And um, you know, as a result of being part of Fuse Hub and getting that initial funding, it's really been a proof of, uh, I want to say past concept, but proof of the technology is works, scales, and shows the, the, the team can actually do the work that we need to do for the um, upcoming scale up work and developments. We won Food Bites, which is a major ag tech um, investment pitch competition. We got through New York um, the year after. So that was a quarter of a million. And now we're working on two um, government grants. So one's an EPA and one's an NSF phase two. So we're now actually finding a new client for our Fuse Up system. And we're scaling up 20 times to build an um, overall 2,000 gallon system at the same client. So um, in addition to that, we're also doing this accelerated dairy farmers of America, but really it's all about acceleration and everything that we did was all thanks to winning this prize with Fuse Hub and then being flexible for working with us. Um, as far as the investments, we were earlier on, so we were, we got the warrants. Um, and we tried doing some, I mean, we, we did get some small negotiations done during the initial phase, but really didn't change anything too structural, just trying to sit with some of the um, other investments we had planned. And even today, we still talk about some opportunities for the for things that could ha happen down the line. But, um, you know, being startups, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you out there are um, expecting to be grant funded, but some of these pitch competitions like this and getting funding is really critical to getting small amounts of cash that's really focused on getting a job done that can help you get another grants and um, you know you're not doing a full raise you're getting a small piece of the pie early on but you're getting to get a lot of value out of it as long as you kind of have a, have a plan so for us fuse up has been great it's 
proved to everyone we have a beautiful picture of a shipping container we can show what we're doing and has gotten us a lot of traction. Great, great. Thank you, Juan. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, our awardees go on and, and win other competitions as well. Um, with that, I'm going to open it up. Um, if anybody has any further questions related to the safe, um, this is a great time to be able to uh, pick Rich's brain while we have him for a few minutes. So um, if you have anything, uh, please share it in the chat. Uh, and I'll see if Rich has any final comments before we uh, move on to um, the guidelines and kind of what the competition looks like for this year. Rich, I don't know if you have any final parting comments for us. Just to say, um, some, um, uh, Julianne has my email. Uh, once you actually read the safe, I, I, I know it's a complex, it's an annoyingly kind of complex document, um, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call, have your lawyer call, or you can call yourself. The other thing I am doing is I'm trying to put together a spreadsheet uh, that will go along with the safe. So you could actually figure out how many shares do I have right now, What's my new investment going to be? How, what percentage of, of the company is the safe going to roll into, you know, making some assumptions? I'm working on that. Uh, it's taking longer than I wanted to. Uh, but once we have that, I'll post that as well. And, that, and uh, or Julianne will post it, and that should be helpful. But please call with any questions. Happy to, happy to take whatever time we need. All right. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. So I will go ahead and I will uh, move on to uh, the general guidelines of the commercialization competition and talk a little bit about the history um, and the specifics uh, for you guys. Um, you know, in the past, I think our funding has uh, generally increased um, over time from 350 to, to 450 to, you know, starting out with um, 250. So, you know, we've, we've seen some, some fluctuation and, you know, we anticipate moving forward kind of in the, the parameters that we've done in the past, uh, $50,000, $75,000 awards have, have been typical. So we're still in the final stages of kind of working through what the, what the actual award amounts will be, but we can kind of start with you know, what the competition is aiming for, some goals and objectives. So, you know, if you're not familiar with the commercialization competition, um, it is for tangible um, hardware prototypes. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, it's here to help small to medium-sized manufacturing and technology companies. Um, we have quite a few different um, industry sectors that we work with. So I'm not gonna go into all of those uh, details, we're currently in the process of developing the guidelines, the FAQs and the application questions. Uh, the, the competition does open uh, next week, so we anticipate having that ready for everybody um, on the actual launch date, if not um, a few days uh, in advance. So, so um, as we mentioned, one of the big parameters to applying is the safe. So, you know, if that's something that, you know, doesn't interest you, then, you know, that's, it's, it's something that is, is a part of the grant agreement. So keep that in mind. Um, in regards to the eligibility and who can apply. So there's a couple of different parameters and I will go over them kind of basic. And then, you know, Patty will talk about, you know, what the details of those items are in terms of how they get processed into the application. So you have to be a formally established company and be able and be registered to do business in New York State at the time of submission. So I encourage you that if it's something that you're thinking about, make sure that you have this in place by the time that you apply, um, when you upload your information. If you upload and it's, you don't have the materials by August 15th, we're not gonna go back in and add anything into that. So please take the time once the guidelines are, are published to know what you have to submit and what, what the deadlines are. But you know, if you're um, incorporated in New York State as opposed to incorporated in another state and then have a physical presence here, there's some documentation that you're just gonna wanna pay attention to to make sure that you, you have that information. Um, another thing is you have to be pre-revenue, less than $100,000, and there's some caveats to that in terms of, of grant funding, so you can take a look at that in the guidelines. And then I think the biggest thing is you have to have a working uh, tangible prototype. Uh, we will have all of the industry sectors outlined in the application, um, but it doesn't cover everything. So if there's something in there that, you know, if you have something that isn't necessarily spelled out in the guidelines, it doesn't mean that it's ineligible. I would just give a call. We, we, are, we 
we don't outline every specific potential prototype that you know could be manufactured. Uh, we also have biotech processes and chemical processes that may not actually have a working prototype. So if you have something like that, I suggest you know just give a call and we can kind of work with you through that. Um, the, where we get into some questions are software projects. So if you have a specific software project and you're working on mobile apps um, and, and kind of going down that path, uh, this isn't going to be a good fit for you. This is not the intent of uh, the prototype uh, competition that, that we are doing here at Fuse Hub. However, there are instances where you might be working on a component of something that has a software piece attached to it. Uh, we will certainly take a look at those on a on a case by case basis. But if the bulk of what you're doing is software related, uh, it won't it won't be a good fit. So just take the time, uh, look through the eligible and ineligible uh, projects. Um, we have that um, spelled out in in the guidelines. Uh, we also have a listing of eligible costs and ineligible costs. One of the things that I can point out is uh, we will not pay for any type of uh, CEO or executive team salaries. So it doesn't matter what type of work you're doing, um, we will not, we will not um, reimburse for those costs. And um, another good point is it is a reimbursement grant, so we have to see the work that you're doing. And then um, once we review, review that, we, we will provide the funds to you if everything is um, approved. Uh, the application will open on July 15th and will close on August 14th at four o'clock. Uh, it is a hard deadline, so please pay attention to that. We do get the bulk of applications probably um, in the last week. Um, so if the application portal shuts down um, and you don't receive a confirmation email, that means that you, you did not get through. So we always tell people, you know, please allow for a little bit of time so you're not uh, struggling at the end. We have a couple of items that you have to upload in regards to your application uh, for a complete um, application and uh, Patty will discuss that further. Uh, the criteria and scoring review, I can kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be looking for. Uh, that is, is still kind of in the works and, and being finalized, but you know, we're looking for prototype validation, product market fit, commercialization, strength of your team, your scope of work, your intellectual property, and your financial snapshot. So how are you going to use the funds in this project? What type of impacts are you going to have? So that will be laid out a little bit um, more clearly in the guidance and in our FAQs uh, for you to review. Um, our judges will be um, announced and, and posted on the website as we uh, move forward. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I know. I feel like I haven't talked very fast, although people tell me I, I do have a tendency to kind of go very quickly. So I'm always here to answer any other particular questions that people have along the way. Um, you know, we, we work with everybody, um, you know, throughout August, uh, July and August, just to make sure that, you know, things are, are going smoothly. Um, we will not help you answer your questions in the application, but we can certainly, you know, give you some guidance on, on some things that um, we have seen. Um, we have a couple of changes from last year. So if you looked at the materials last year, um, we're doing things a little bit differently um, this time around. Um, with a commercialization summary uh, instead of an application process. So there are a little, uh, a few nuances uh, this year uh, to, to pay attention to. And with that, I mean, I, I don't see any questions uh, coming in, so I think we can probably, um, you know, move on to the next section. And what I would like to do if Rhonda and Juan are still on um, is just kind of talk to them and, and hear their story about what they think that the commercialization competition did for them in, in terms of, you know, um, personal, professional um, developments, not the financial side, because what I have heard over the last several years is the impact that people see above and beyond um, actually winning the award funds. So people have some great networking opportunities and have, you know, answered some, some business questions and have made some really good contacts. So I think for our attendees that, that haven't um, attended the competition or people who might be working in incubators with small um, businesses, it might be good for them to hear what else, what else does the competition do for, for you as a company. So Rhonda, Juan, anyone want to take a first crack at that? I guess I'll go Can first. Nope, oh, Rhonda's gone. <laughs> okay, here I am. Here I am? 
Yep. Can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. Okay. So I I think for combined energies, um, a couple things that that really come to mind is how going through the competition helped us focus um, and and be able to communicate because it's a very our product is a very technical product. And if you're not familiar with power electronics, you know, you get lost in the minutia. So we went from a very um, technical presentation that we initially started with, right, Julianne? I'm sure you remember it, to um, once, we, once our application was accepted and we were into the competition phase, um, working with um, Dan O'Sullivan for um, the consulting on pitching was huge for us because it totally changed our perspective um, and it helped us communicate with investors, other investors better, and to make them understand um, something that can be very technical, put it in non-technical terms. And I you know, hate to use the term dumb it down, but it took a lot of dumbing down to get our story to something that we could communicate. And we use that presentation now, as opposed to what we used to use. Um, and so that was huge for us. So visibility um, to other organizations that either attended um, the meeting and then people, oh, sorry, there's nothing I can do about that phone um, ringing in the background, um, that it's, um, you know, people, People are seeking us, have sought us out. So I think that's really remarkable about the, the type of people that attend the commercialization competition on the day of the competition and um, just the connections that you make. So you can put me on mute now because I can't stop that phone ringing. Okay. Yes, this is Juan here. Uh, I mean, this is one of our first real with repercussions pitch events. Um, you know, we done a bunch of things as, as a students and maybe you're a lot of you are in that kind of position. Um, Infusetub does help all the teams by providing them with pitching assistance by a really good pitch coach, um, which is super valuable. Um, and you do need to learn how to do real pitches for investors and he'll really help you with that. Um, the event itself um, is exciting. I mean, there's a lot of companies there. There's also some partners that you could actually work with. I think we met New York Policy, the Pollution Prevention Institute there, which has given us analysis for greenhouse gas emissions impacts. Um, and then I'm mean, winning the pitch event. I don't know how they do it now. Do you do you give the awardees that day or is it afterwards? Uh, do you mean do we announce them on the on the yeah. day? Yes, yes we do. Okay, so that's at least exciting. You don't have to wait a couple of months like some other pitch competitions. <laughs> uh, but that and getting talk to getting to talk to investors there and other startups that are kind of doing this pitch along with you um, is is all exciting and building a network. But additionally, I mean, after you do get awarded, this is institutionalized money, and as um, Julianne said that it is um, it's reimbursement based. So, you know, during your application, kind of think about how you're realistically going to do this in front 15k or 20k, because um, that's kind of a problem for a lot of people uh, to to be able to front that amount of money. Um, I mean, they're very amenable, and I mean, they're not trying to not give the money, but you have to follow the rules and be responsible there. Um, so. A, keeping track of how spending goes and making sure that I'm actually documenting everything in a proper way was actually one of the first steps to actually keeping track of finances for real investments afterwards. So that's kind of a more adulting process for startups that we that we learned from Fuse up too. So um, that's a great point, Juan. And if I could give out gold stars, I would give one to you because I, I it's great to hear that coming from a company perspective and that you know, you really have to think about that. We do work with you on a scope of work to, to, to um, administer the funds in a way that makes sense to you. We, we don't develop the, the milestones for you. Um, so we, we ask people to take a look at that. And, you know, we understand that things are, um, you know, going to fluctuate a little bit and change. So, you know, we're happy to work through that with people. But it's good to know that you, you really should be 
be thinking about that. It's not just a matter of here's um, $50,000 or here's $75,000 and you get to spend it, you know, at your own, you know, leisure, however you want to. There, there are some parameters in place. Um, we're a small organization, but we work really hard to get the money out the door very quickly. Um, but we do have some um, parameters that we have, we have to follow as well. Um, I have a uh, thank you, uh, Juan and Rhonda, for your insight into the, the competition. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I think over time I've heard from, you know, many people who have attended just the resources and connections both within Fuse Hub as well as um, our 70 plus assets that we have throughout um, NYSTAR um, that people meet, you know, different types of uh, people at the organization that can benefit them in multiple ways. Um, before I uh, move over to Patty and the application process, there's a couple of questions that came in and one is, can the funds go towards building a small R&D rental space? Um, right off the top of my head, I'm probably going to say that that is probably a no, but um, without knowing more details about what the project is, uh, you know, I, I really can't give a 100% confirmation on that. So um, certainly reach out afterwards and, and we can talk about that in detail a little bit more. And uh, letters of intent, yes, that is something that will be included uh, in the scoring criteria, um, things that they're going to be looking for. So do you have customers? Um, you know, on on tap here, so we can we can talk about that uh, a little bit more towards the end of the program. So I'd like to. Um, I think we're actually um, doing pretty well here on time. So I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Patty now to talk to you guys about the application um, process and and what that looks like for this year. Before I do that, let me just recap one thing that I never said um, that is fairly important for this year. Um, traditionally, we've had this as a two-day event uh, in Albany, where the first night is a networking event, second day is our pitch sessions. Um, as everyone uh, understands, we're in some pretty extenuating circumstances. Uh, not sure what that's going to look like, whether it's going to be virtual, whether it's going to be a combination of both. So uh, please understand that that is certainly subject to change um, depending on the situations um, as we move forward. So. Um, just kind of check back um, for the guidelines next week. And then as we move forward, um, there certainly still is some possibilities that that could, that, that could change. So keep that in the back of your mind um, in terms of your, your pitch. So Patty, I will send it over to you. Uh, thank you, Julianne. Hello, I'm Patty Rushberger. I am the program coordinator for the Jeff Lawrence Innovation Fund at Fuse Hub. And I work very, um, in, I'm very involved with the SurveyMonkey Apply platform, which is the platform you're going to be using if you apply. So the first thing is you have access to the platform uh, on July um, 15th, once we open for um, the application once we open the application period and the link to the platform will be on our commercialization competition page on the Fuse Hub website. So that's how you have access to it. Now, some of you may be familiar with SurveyMonkey. In, in general, if you have a SurveyMonkey account, that's not the same as SurveyMonkey Apply. That's within their family of platforms, but that's a separate platform. So regardless of having or not uh, SurveyMonkey account, you have to create a SurveyMonkey apply account specifically. So once you click on the link on our website, it will, if you, it will lead you to the login page. And if you don't have a login, you create an account from there. Now, SurveyMonkey apply has a couple of things that are not completely intuitive. So one of the things it does is that if you're creating an account for the first time, in order to apply for the competition, you're going to have to name your application before you actually create the account. So that feels back words just go with it so you name your application after the name of your company so that helps us keep track of the applications by, by company name and then it takes you to create the account uh, one of the biggest items that i get feedback on that that people seem to have the most problem with is keeping track of their login information it seems like it, you know that wouldn't be an issue but uh, a lot of applicants work for universities, have multiple emails. You have a, a university related email. You also have your company email. You also have a personal email. So I've seen 
a few times people create multiple accounts with because they're based on different emails and then they can't find their application because the application is under a different email. The application will be email specific. So make sure when you create the account that you take the time to save it somehow, your email and password combo. That is the only issue in SurveyMonkey that I have not been able to help people with. The uh, SurveyMonkey apply is very, uh, feels very strongly about uh, privacy issues so they don't allow us to help with password issues so if you have if you get locked out if you can't remember your password if you don't know for sure which email you used those are issues that I have a hard time helping people with you have to contact SurveyMonkey apply directly I can help you contact them if you need help figuring out how to contact it's not a phone call it's all through uh, forms on uh, website on their website and then emails and so that process is time consuming is not an immediate if you have problems with anything else and you call me I can help you on the spot hopefully uh, but for password pr uh, problems that's not the case so keep that in mind you know if you are leaving uh, if you're getting towards the end of the application period and still working on it and now you can't log in and you can't access your application and you can't work on it at all it takes time it's not an immediate help with that it, it might take like a, an entire day for you to solve that issue so keep that in mind so you know make sure you save your information apply early and submit early now i say that with the caveat you can save and edit your application for the entire time up until August 14th at 4 p.m. At 4 p.m., the application automatically stops allowing, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the platform automatically stops allowing applications through. And it seems like at every round, we have one application that, you know, we get that phone call saying, oh, I didn't have time to do it. That is a hard deadline. Make sure to give yourself time to upload. There's three applications tasks this year plus a couple forms plus the payment and then you have to confirm everything at the end so make sure you give yourself enough time to get all of that done before four if, even if you're just about to click the button at four o'clock the platform will shut down and your application will not come through so but you know so so save your time you know keep editing it to the end but don't leave it to the very very end because that could uh be a gamble that does not pay off um that said so any other problems uh in the platform you can contact us uh, we have a guide that you can download from within the platform with screenshots and step by steps i uh, highly encourage you to take a look at that download it's a pdf form download it you know you can search for things within the pdf so whatever part of the application you're having an issue with um Julia, uh, Patty, i just wanted to yes. chime in you you just brought up a good point uh one of the things i left out uh there is a 50 dollar application fee so you just you just called out the application fee so thank you yes absolutely and so there will be so when you log in you create your account the first uh tasks you see are the eligibility tasks which julianne mentioned so you have to confirm that you are okay with signing a safe you have to confirm your pre-revenue status um, you have to confirm that you were um, registered at either incorporated or at least registered to do business in New York State. In our FAQ and guidelines, we have a list of documents that are generally acceptable as proof of New York State presence. You know, the, the easiest one is your incorporation papers if you were incorporated in New York, but if you're not, you still have to reach out to the um, oh my god, I'm blanking on the department in New York State that, that does this. Thank you, and uh, and and register, um, and then uh, and then they will give you a piece of paper with your DOL number, and and so a copy of that will suffice. But there are a number of other documents that will suffice as well. So if you have questions as to what document we need, you can reach out to us, or you can take a look at the FAQs. Uh, we will need you to upload. That's one of the tasks in the application we need you to upload some kind of document from new york state that says you are registered to the business here um, once you fill out all the eligibility tasks and you click uh, you mark it as complete you get a message uh, it's not a pop-up it's a message on the side so again it's one of those things where it's not uh, very intuitive so you gotta look all of the list of tasks you have to 
complete will always be on the left part of your application screen. So make sure that you look at that because as you complete tasks, new tasks will show up. So look at the left to make sure that you're filling out everything you need to fill out. So once you fill out the eligibility questions, another task will open on the left hand side of the screen that will tell you whether or not based on your answers you are eligible to apply and you have to acknowledge that question that answer that message in order to open the actual application questions so sometimes people get caught in that too again if at the time of application you get caught and you can't remember this or figure it out reach out to us but just keep an eye on the left mark everything as complete and things will keep popping out for you once you pass the eligibility phase stage you you have all of the tasks for the application so you have the actual application questions you have a budget form you need to fill out there will be three uploads so you have to upload your new york state proof of uh, register to do business you have to upload your prototype um, it could be a video it could be a picture it could be a YouTube link to a video I will talk about, about more about that step in a moment and then you also have to upload your a PDF version of your PowerPoint presentation you are going to download the PDF I'm sorry the PowerPoint deck from our website uh, and then you save it as a PDF when you're done and you upload that to the platform. Then you have the $50 payment task and at the very end you have a confirmation task. Once you complete all of that, as you work through it and you mark things as complete, you're gonna get some green check marks on your screen. Once everything is check marked in green, you're still not done. And that's the final step where people also get caught. Um, there's a button that up to that point will be dimmed on the left bottom part of the screen under the list of tasks you have to complete there'll be two buttons one to review all the items in your application and once you actually submit your application it does not come to us until you hit that submit button and that's when you get an email confirmation so if you have not gotten an email confirmation make sure that you have actually clicked on the submit button also check your junk email frequently survey monkey apply based generated emails go to people's spam or junk folders so make sure to check those folders if you believe that you have correctly submitted your application and not seen that email and then when you see that email in your junk folder make sure to mark it as safe so you get all of the future updates uh, in, in email so they're not all going to your junk email okay so that's the basics um, so now I'm gonna talk about the video upload. Um, we are asking that you submit a three to five minute video of your prototype. Some prototypes are more complex than others. So if yours is pretty simple and three minutes to suffice, that's beautiful. If you need more time to explain it or to show how it works, you can go up to five minutes. I understand that the size of the file of a video is not exclusively based on the time. Time is a component of it, but whatever equipment you use to record the video will also have an impact on the size of the file. So our biggest concern is how big the file is. So keep in mind that the biggest the file, the more time you take to upload, the higher uh, risk of it having a problem during the upload and then when we are trying to look at it it'll take longer as well so i do encourage people to use youtube videos where applicable you know if, if that is something you could do a link to youtube works well for us uh, that might be easier to than then to actually upload the file uh, if not you know you should be fine within those parameters if you get an error message or if you for whatever reason can get it done again reach out to us i can help you with the technical part of that and um, that leads me to the next point is that everything you upload or fill out within the survey monkey apply i highly encourage you you know right before submitting so next to the submit button there's a button that says review i highly 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 encourage you to review your entire application because you may feel out things on the screen that look right to you when you go to review sometimes we have gotten budgets i'm sorry budgets that have been zeroed out completely so we'd have no idea what your actual budget is we have gotten pdf files that have been cut off in the upload so we can only see part of it 
when you review, you look at everything the way our judges will look at. So take the time to scroll down and make sure that all of your fields are fill, filled in, that you know your budget numbers are actually in as they should be, that all your files show up on the screen the way they should, that your prototype video plays. So do I, I encourage you to take the time to make sure these things work. Um, and again, if you run into a problem and they are not working, and it's before the deadline, reach out, we'll help you. We can help you with almost everything before the deadline, but please don't leave it for the last minute. I actually encourage you to not even leave, leave it to the last week, uh, just in case, so, so to make sure we're available and have the time to walk you through and solve any issues. Um, just checking my notes. So, Julianne mentioned the 4 p.m. deadline, and we already talked about that. that that's uh, the platform <laughs> really uh, hammering that, that nail. Um, the platform will shut down, so make sure that you have everything before 4 o'clock. I think I covered everything that I had on my list. And yeah, I know it sounds, it sounds great. I mean, I know it probably sounds a little bit more daunting than it really is if you, if you haven't been in it, but I think, you know, from what we've heard, um, historically, people on the other side have said that they feel that it's been really good to work with. I mean, there are a couple hangups here and there, but I think that that, you know, probably is, happens across the board, but, um, you know, we've tried to address everybody's issues. You know, we, we uh, take that into consideration when we prepare for the following year. Um, there's only one thing um, in regards to what Patty was mentioning about the uploads. Uh, in regards to the three to five minute video, uh, there may be an additional question or two that you have to answer within that video. So I'm thinking that it, you know, it's the same thing that she said, it depends on how you respond, whether it'll be, you know, three to five minutes. So uh, once we have that posted, um, you know, that you guys can all take a look at that uh, and, and circulate that, that information uh, to others. Uh, I don't see any, I've, I think I've answered the questions that have come in through the chat. I haven't seen anything else. And, um, you know, it's hard to believe, but we have almost been on here for an hour. So uh, it went a little longer than I thought, but I'm, I'm excited. You know, we've had a pretty captive audience here and and some great feedback from our prior uh, commercialization uh, competition awardees, which, which I felt was really imperative to add to our info session because that's giving you a perspective that you know we that's different from ours, and, and I wanted to make sure that the companies could could hear that, and then also get you know uh, direct info from Rich about the safe, and uh, I will. Um, go ahead and, and make sure that his uh, information is available to you if you have specific questions. Um, and I can't stress enough, if you if you are thinking about the SAFE and have issues, um, it's probably a better idea to talk about it um, in advance of the competition so that we can work through those things and you have a better idea um, as you kind of progress through the through the competition phases. Uh, the timeline is in the FAQs too so that you can get an understanding of you know what the next steps are uh, in terms of the, the process once you uh, get through the application. So I want to uh, thank everybody, thank uh, everybody from Fuse Hub behind the scenes and to our panelists, Juan, Rich, and Rhonda. Um, if you have any questions or concerns uh, following the info session, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And um, I hope that everyone is safe and well. Thank you.